Have any of you given any thought about this? We talked around the edges of it, but just as a momentary intro. In everyday affairs, there is a need for a rational speaker, <coughs> performer, to try and immediately win over the audience. Uh, and you see it displayed in uh, the easy shot is to take show business itself, but you're doing it, if you recall, in every human relationship, moment by moment, someone is being the performer, someone's the audience. If you just have two people to look at as the dance that someone is leading and someone is following, if they are indeed dancing with any passion and excitement whatsoever. But let's take showbiz, the good old ones that you hear all the time, uh, a speaker or a performer, a comedian comes out, you know, hello, uh, is anybody here from Detroit? And let's say that you know he's performing in Lansing. <laughs> so the point is, a whole lot of people are going to go, yeah. I mean, it's a similar thing. Maybe a friend to come out and say, was everybody here to have a good time tonight? <laughs> yeah, there are. You paid 15 bucks, cover charge or something, and you're paying ten dollars for watered down drink. You're trying your best, and the guy comes out and says, everybody ready to have a good time? Yeah, you know, you get them going. Or the good old classic ones, the old tent preachers in the South would come out and look around. Of course, they got all the people with wheelchairs and <laughs> caskets nearby. And he comes, <laughs> the guy comes out and he says, do we have any people here ready to have a miracle from the Lord tonight? Hey, you got all these people? Yeah. <laughs> well, in case you never thought about it, all of it, all of it is, and it's not some sort of cheap attack now on showbiz. Because it's going on all the time. I just picked out the easy ones to see, or the easiest, because you're doing it to each other. Individuals do it. But you understand the point of saying, uh, it's like it's an ad lib. The guy walks on the stage and says, well, boy, glad to be here in Lansing. Uh, oh, uh, before I get, is everybody here from uh, Detroit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like he just thought about it. You know? If he's playing Los Angeles, he'll come out and he says, uh, uh, is is anybody here from uh, El Segundo or you know, somewhere? The point is, he'll get people going, yeah. And in case you never thought, and I'm not at all sure that they even think about it because it's not important. They're doing the will of the great director anyway. And so they may not even necessarily know it, but the point is, you get people going, yeah, for their hometown. Or did anybody see that game last night? Yeah! And the guy hadn't done anything. He hadn't told a joke. You don't know what he's funny. You never heard of him. And you're already, hey! And that's kind of easy. In a sense, he is already winning the audience over. But one thing in specific I want to point out, if a man comes out and says, anybody here from Detroit? Now, after that, after the response, after he begins to win you over, that's not the end of it. Because his response then has to be predictable. <laughs> they expected. In other words, he cannot come out, and uh, good evening, glad to be here. It's the first time here. I, I hadn't even played in Michigan at all before. Uh, oh, by the way, is anybody here from Detroit? And a whole bunch of them go, yeah. Now, he's not going to say, hey, so what? Detroit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, hey, glad to be here. Is everybody ready to have a good time? Yeah. Well, you came to the wrong damn place. <laughs> I do not have to point out the big old, uh, you mean Otis Redding's alive? No, the obvious, the obvious, the obvious. No, they're not going to do that. That is not the way the city game, city life is played. And so to win the audience over, I won't go into any great details. You can figure it out. I don't have to draw an explanation. But the kind of things to get the audience to respond in a positive way, to get them to even participate, if you want to really cut it up, is to first get them to participate is everybody here tonight? Are you glad you came? Or, boy, is it cold enough out there for you? <laughs> yeah. So you get them participating, but you do something that, as far as they're concerned, is going to be a positive move. They don't think about it, because we're going to get into that tonight. Unless I take four hours to do this intro.
But they are expecting a positive payback when you say, is anybody here from Detroit, by the way? Yeah. And then you're supposed to say something. Boy, I love Detroit. I'm from Detroit. I played Detroit last week. I'm going, oh, what a town, what a town. But now consider, once this gets started, once it gets started with this kind of performer and speaker that seems to be actually on stage in an audience, once it gets started, just between people, just you meet, hey, hadn't seen you in a while. How are you? Same thing is going on. The expected has got to be the response of the performer, the person that seems to be starting it off. As I said, is anybody here from Detroit? The expected is going to happen. When you go ahead and respond, the guy's going to say something like, oh, great, I just played Detroit. At least that, even if he doesn't go into some great pen about how much he loves Detroit, at least he says, oh, great, I, I just got back from Detroit, just wondered. No, he didn't just wonder. He wants to get whether he knows it or not. Life is wanting the crowd to start participating in a positive way and, I might add, with positive expectation without analyzing it because they're certainly not expecting and he is certainly not going to do is anybody here from Detroit and go, get out. I hate, I, God, I hate people from Detroit. But now consider, if anything new is going to happen, you have a problem. If there's going to be the attempt for this performer, this speaker, to actually proffer anything new, like new information, you have a difficulty in winning over the audience. A little more specifically, I was going to point out, this kind of stuff. How could it ever win over an audience? All the way from this to you know, a relative degree, if there were anything else going on with ordinary people, of the attempt to offer up something new. To win over the audience, what you have got to deliver, even as you start to win immediately, what you've got to deliver is the expected, the worn out. And I don't mean that in some way that this would be insulting, but uh, you've been through this enough to consider that anything radically new cannot be offered up sans the expected. No matter what it is. No matter if the Speaking engagement, if we go back to what would apparently be a tangible external example, there's this huge banner and all sorts of advertising right there in the heart of the great Detroit that says tonight, a lecture on brand new stuff. A lecture on things you have never heard or even steal my line. A lecture on radically new information. And you show up. The guy's going to come out. And he could even try and do this. He could try and come out and look new himself which some years ago, I don't know what I would do now, but some years ago, here in the United, in the Western world, of course, you'd come out and wear a robe and a turban, maybe. Nowadays, I don't know what you'd do. But anyway, the man might try to come out, or the speaker might try to come out and physically present the appearance of something new. And you might go, oh, boy, oh, God, I love new stuff. It ain't going to be new stuff. Because the first thing the guy's going to do is some version of this. Did you people actually come out here to, something, to hear something new tonight? And if I go, Yeah! He might even, if life was one to play around, might go, are you sure? Are you sure you people didn't come out expecting to hear that some kind of same old crap? No, no. You want something new. I mean, have I got people here that you people show up to, to actually hear some new information? Yeah. Then what's it going to be? If it was actually new, if it was radically new, and I'm not going to stop and split all the hairs, but you people now have some notion in your own mind. Don't worry about whatever I might say. Of radically new. It's got to be beyond the limits of polarized thought. But if there was something new going to happen, it's like an insult. It would be comparable to the man coming out and say, did you people actually come in here to hear something new tonight? And everybody goes, yeah. And he goes, well, screw you. There's not enough of you. I can look at you. There's not enough of you to even know the old stuff. I bet a bunch of you people are from Detroit. In other words, in other words, it would be comparable to insulting. It could not be the expected. It could not be the well-worn. It could not be that which in any manner would, quote, win them over. I just thought perhaps I'd mention that. Some of you even dance for yourselves nowadays, those of you that get dangerous or close to knowing how to think. That's what you're confronted with. So you could ask yourself, ergo, how could TKS ever win them over? 
at all. How could you win over any audience? Uh, well, hell, we hadn't taken but 40 minutes for the intro. I can't resist. One other little thing about life, about speakers, about performers, about the ordinary dance of human intercourse, the transfer of energy at the secondary level between peoples. But take it back to the idea of the speaker and the performer. From their view, if they had one, if they were asked, their operational view is that by trying to win them over, the purpose, you know, are you from, is anybody here from Detroit? Or does everybody, did you people having trouble getting in through the snowstorm? Or, boy, isn't it cold? Whatever it is, the purpose of winning it over, although they would not be analyzing it verbally, but the purpose of winning it over is to make the audience like the performer. In other words, speaking for the performer, the idea of winning, getting the audience to, to win them over is to make them like you, that is, the performer. Whereas if this kind of stuff was an incomparable way, well, I'm about to comparable way it verbally, the parallel would be not that, but it would be that you're trying to win over the audience for the material. And to that, I can only point out to you, fat chance. Because, and then I'll leave the intro. That was going to be then, but I didn't win enough of you over. <laughs> Think about it another way. Think about it at the ordinary level, not just some kind of <laughs> wild-eyed showbiz type. It, it's not that, although I can stay with that example, but consider just your normal intellectual intercourse with other people, your social relationships. The performer, a comedian, a speaker, but a comedian's a good example. They're coming out and, hey, glad to be here. First time in Michigan. Uh, oh, uh, is anybody here from Detroit? Were, yeah. I'll do it right quick. You understand that from a certain view, not just psychologically, although it will roll, that he you know, doesn't care whether anybody's from Detroit. He doesn't care anything about Michigan. And in the sense I was trying to get you to make this kind of intellectual comparison, what he is doing and winning over the audience is to make them, it's no secret, like him. Like him personally. Which you can go from the stage now to individual people. Just somebody that you strike up a conversation with while you're waiting around to have your tires changed. While you're waiting in line at the post office. Or somebody you know. Whereas, the only comparable verbal way to use what I've just said regarding this kind of stuff would be that if a performer was doing this, if somebody was trying to present this kind of stuff in some sort of straightforward manner to present radically new information, it would not be to make them like you, the person, but it would be to make them like the material. Now, if I did that and somebody listened, I had a comedian here, sane, educated person, let's just call him, say it's a comedian could be an actor, but let's say a comedian, that's an immediate performance that we can talk about. And if I said that, uh, I can go ahead and speak. There would be some sort of comedians around that could listen to that and say, well, that's not true. I hear what you're saying, and that's kind of a, there might be some sort of psychological validity to that and some kind of extreme, but I'd say in the main, that's not true. I hear what you're saying. I'm still speaking for this comedian, but he'd say what I'm trying to do. I never thought about it that way, but trying to win him over to say who's here from Detroit and you know, you ready to have a good time? Or, boy, as if I had one of those uh, hurricane drinks that they make. Isn't that good? What I'm trying to do is to get them in the mood to laugh and get them in a positive mood so that they'll like my material. It's not just me. In other words, they'd be saying I was incorrect. But, but now all of you have got to hear this. It's no attack on the human ego. But people do not deal in material. That is not the way humans operate. That's not the way the energy operates. But they could say, I'm trying to get somebody to... React favorably to what I say, to what I think, to my ideas. That is my material. But that's not so. It's to win people over, to win the audience over, to make them like the person. The material is irrelevant. And if you have any doubt, if you don't see that clearly, everybody will change their material if it's not going over. <laughs> wait just a minute. I got, wait a minute. I got, everybody will change. Fire all my riders. Oh, you people don't like a Muslim comedian? I'm sorry, that was just a joke. I'm a Jewish comedian. Doesn't matter. Oh, did you people think that I was a male comedian? Oh, no. I'm a Hindu transsexual comedian. 
Uh, all right. No, that was just a joke. <laughs> I'm actually a comedian from Detroit. Is anybody here from Detroit? <laughs> Boy, wasn't it cold up there? They can't help it. There's nothing wrong. But the winning over of the audience is on the basis to make the audience like the person. That is the efficient, proper transfer of energy. Whereas this sort of thing, if it was operating somewhere pushing at the proper threshold of trying to offer something radically, trying to inject some sort of more direct information radically to an audience, it's not on the basis of making them like whoever the performer is. It'd be to make them like the material. And that was, of course, where I led up to the subversive, non-serious wrap-up of Fat Chance. All right, I was going to, well, we're out of time. Okay. <laughs> I thought since to so many of us, well, I guess darn near all of us, that this particular day is such a special and auspicious occasion to so many people that I was going to try and offer up a new gift, a new little present. And I'll admit it's a verbal present. But it goes like this. That all of man's reasons for doing things follow the need for them having been done. Now this falls under the general heading I'm sure that we'll be using for a few more hours or days. Uh, it's known as acts and facts. <laughs> At least anyone think if the pronunciation and it is another way of putting it is that acts I mean, facts follow acts. Or man's reasons for doing what he does always trail the need for doing what he did. And I must admit, for those of you who are maybe having any trouble unwrapping this, uh, the last few, 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 few few times that we met have been leading around this more directly than it was last year's few, few times, perhaps. But the short version, the telling version is that facts follow acts. And the more extended <coughs> version is that all of man's reasons for doing things follow, trail, the need for the things having been done. Now in the matter, there's just all sorts of things to do with this. Acts and facts. Well, facts, somewhat similar to aims, Remember, we were talking about aims and methods in a certain way. But facts, almost, parentheses, aims, are silent and quite often swift. Whereas facts, parentheses, explanations of why the acts were prudent, <coughs> proper, and necessary, which always, of course, follow the acts, but the facts, let me go ahead and emphasize the way I'll probably try and keep talking tonight, 
you can look at facts as being, at least in part, operationally synonymous with the word explanations. And acts, you don't really have to do much of an extended view of other descriptions other than you could look at it as being the aims, the silent aims of life. But whereas the, ain't, whereas the acts, just the acts of men, are silent, very often swift, <laughs> afterwards, the succeeding facts, which are explanations of why the acts that just went before them, of why the acts were prudent, why they were proper, why they were necessary, the facts are always verbal. And they also have all of the time in the world. <laughs> literally. Literally. And I think I can make some of you see it. It, in a sense... Facts slash explanations, uh, we could say that they are in infinite. And if you can see it, maybe in a minute I could even make that harsher and say facts are act actually are infinity. Because there is no limit to facts, <laughs> spatially and temporally. While acts, that is the needs, the aims of life and apparently of man, but while acts and needs may be permanent, the facts the explanations may change. Uh, it just so happens that there is an example going on. It's nothing new, but if anyone that, if anybody ever sees this later, this is what one sixteen ninety one. And there's a prime example seems to be going on right now. Country A invades Country B. And then explains, offers the facts to let us say country C and D and E and the whole the other people, not involved, but let's say to country C, country A explains, gives the facts afterwards of why it invaded country B. In which let us say, it's quite common, uh, country C finds unacceptable. Country A says, well, wait a minute. And it, and it offers up a new one. It changes it somewhat. It says, well, wait a minute. And it can subsequently continue to offer up explanations. And may I point out, this has no limitation whatsoever to politics, to invasions. We're talking about the movement of human life in the world in which it must be explained, which is the secondary world of man. The more, once this happens, and you can look at it on the basis, uh, whatever makes it the easiest for you right now, you can look at it between men, you can look at it between nations, between institutions, all the same thing, that after an act is taken, so happen as I said, it's going on right now, but uh, it's just a great one because it seems so valid, and people may be losing their lives over it, but that one whole country, an institution of a whole bunch of people, invades this other country. A does B. And then country C says, oh, what? And country A says, well, wait a minute. And they explain. That is, after the act follows what? In the secondary world, always the fact. Facts always follow the acts. So country A says, well, we did it because of so-and-so. And I'll repeat it. For this kind of example, let us say that country A, or everybody else seems to goes, ah, oh, come on. So country A, it may happen quickly, but remember, facts 
are almost synonymous with infinity. They are not limited by time. So it may happen quickly. It may not. It may not even happen quickly that the other countries, or country C, rejects the facts that follow the acts of country A invading country B. So country C, at some time, may be immediate, may take hours, may take days, and country C goes, well, no, no, I do not accept blah, 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 that explanation. And then country A, it may come immediately, it may come a while later, country A goes, uh, okay, and it gives another fact. That is another explanation. And it can go on and on and on. There is no time limit to facts, whereas acts are limited by time. There's an aspect of this that the more the facts involved, and again consider in a sense for tonight that explanations are operationally synonymous when we say facts, but the more the facts involved are debated, considered, then the less clear seems to be any possible justifiable reason for the act. Back to this example, if you need to see it, and you don't have to take the one that might be, that I might be referring to right now at this time, because look throughout history. But once something happens, you won't go back to a good hard example of one country, one group of, invades another. Now the longer in the ordinary temporal sense in the 3D world, the longer, the more it is discussed. Such as country A says, well, here's why we did it. And it says why. And the third party is country C goes, no. Whether we're talking about a day, a week, or a month. So then country A goes, well, a day, a week, or a month. It says, well, all right, how about this? We also had this reason. Day, a week, or a month, country C goes, no, that, no that's, that's still not a justifiable reason. So a day, a week, or a month, country A comes back with, well, it's not just that. I didn't want to go into it. <laughs> but, and they offer up this reason. A day, a week, or a month, country C says, well, even putting all that together, uh, we still do not find your facts, your explanations, to be acceptable. So a day, a week, or a month, country A says, all right, look at it this way. The more this goes on, the less clear, the less possible sight that seems to make any justifiable sense to anybody. Of course, country A wouldn't admit this. They couldn't. But the less is the likelihood, the possibility that anybody involved with the debate, anybody magnetically, electrically interested in this affair, the discussion of it. The affair is over. Remember, we're not talking about acts now. We're talking about facts. The invasion's already taken place. Days, months, maybe longer in the past. But the more the discussion goes on, the less is there any possibility of anyone having any sight any insight into the original act being explainable, that in any way it was justified. Now, there's a crude way of looking at it and say, well, if it goes on long enough, as some attorneys like to point out, well, as has been pointed out, that, you know, if a case goes on too long, the witnesses can die. Their memory fades. That can be good or bad, but according to which side you're on. But you can look at historically on a large level and say, well, if what you're describing kept going on and on and on, and finally somebody, old men sitting around spitting in the sand and rubbing their long beards, and somebody says, I still don't like the way old country A attacked country B back, you know, when you and I were teenagers. And the old guy says, me either. How about those cheap reasons they gave when they first did it? Yeah, wasn't that a laugh? And they kind of look because the truth is, if somebody jumped into their neurons and said, what was the reason? They're not sure. All they remember is, well, we, didn't, we, we weren't fooled. <laughs> and so it's still country A is occupying country B. And you jumped out and you were playing some sort of 
quadrimensional devil's advocate and you were in their brains and you said, well, are you guys still upset? Let's say these guys are in country C. Are you guys still upset about what country A did to country B back 50 years ago? And they go, oh, yeah. And if you said, well, I just vaguely heard of that. Can you bring me up to speed? What were the details? God, it really got complicated. I mean, they invaded them. You know that. And you can say, well, I, you know, I know that. You can't get where going back and recounting the act of anything. That is the fool's way out. That is a desperation stand to go back and say, well, let me tell you what happened. Everybody knows what happened. Always. Everybody knows the acts. I mean, if you can describe, if you can ask somebody, say, well, what about this act? Then you know the act. Nobody has to say, well, let me tell you about it. Because you're not asking about the act. You're asking about the facts that followed the acts. And so if you were playing this kind of neural invisible agent with these two old men in country C, and you say, well, tell me what happened. They say, well, country A invaded country B. Everybody knows that. You wouldn't be asking. And that's not what you want. Of course, you wouldn't have to put up with that. All you got to do is go, yeah. <laughs> or that's all you got to do is say, well, yeah, I knew that, but what I wanted was you guys inside, your opinion, the facts. They could start then, the best they could do would be say, well, country A gave a whole bunch of just real unacceptable reasons. They tried to justify their actions. Oh, boy. And if you ask for details, they don't really remember. That's not the point. And so remember where I started this little sidestep. It's like an ordinary person's intelligence could say, well, all I was describing was that if it gets talked about so much, people forget. That's not untrue, but that doesn't tell you a lot. And you people should be better than that here because I gave you a description and if you get real fast real quick forget nations forget about what people do to each other that somebody cheated you somebody spoke ill of you somebody didn't respect you properly but the act is over that somebody a cousin a guy you saw a guy used to work at some place one time uh, cheated you gave you change at the store and he shortchanged you a five, and you told him. He said, no, I didn't. And he got real mad and pulled a gun or said, if you don't get here, I'll shoot you. The act is over with. The act. It's the facts that follow. And what happens? The more it is discussed, and I say the more from an ordinary view, they would look at it as being back in the temporal scheme because they'd say, well, the longer it's discussed, or they might even want to say, well, the further away from the event, the act that you get, yeah, it gets less clear. I can still remember that guy. His first name, well, yeah, I remember his first name was Frank. And I remember the story, now that you bring it up. <coughs> what was the details? Well, I told you, the, the guy shortchanged me. Well, can you remember any details? Well, no, it's been so long ago. But he would say, I remember it. I know that I was mistreated. But it is the more it is discussed, and it's not just time. That would be the best ordinary people would do with it, is that well, the further you get away from the event, the harder it is to remember the act itself. It's not that. There is something much more complex and much more direct, and that is the more facts are discussed, the more facts are debated, the more the facts are wrangled over, the less possibility that anybody involved will ever have any clear perception, even acknowledgement, of what the act was. The act almost becomes, dare I say it? Oh, go ahead, you pushy bastard. Almost becomes irrelevant from a certain twisted view. Speaking of twisted views, I can really twist it then. Let's go back and pick it up at this measure. The more the invasion, let's go back to that, the attack, the act, the more it is discussed, that is facts, the less clear seems to be any possible. 
And remember, I went through that little stage. There was no attack on country A because they can keep coming up with explanations as long as the magnetic, the electrical attraction between any peoples, any countries, to use this example, remain. That even if it's 10 or 15 years later and somebody is still bitching about country A attacking country B. They're not doing anything about it, but they're still complaining. The more that something that is the facts are discussed, the less clear to anybody interested, the less clear seems to be any, any, possible explanation for the attack, for the act. It's just a fact. It doesn't have anything to do with politics. It doesn't have to do anything with the just or the injustice of the cause. Nothing. It's just that the more it is debated, the facts, the less it will ever seem clear to anyone Country A, country B, country C, somebody just walked in off the street and just heard about it. The less it will ever seem that there's any possible reason, justifiable reason for the attack. That was the pickup where we were. The new measure. Are you ready? There's a reason for that. Or a reason I'm going to put into sound waves. The reason is that there is no intellectual that is human. There is no reason for the invasion. <laughs> there was no reason, no intellectual reason for the invasion. Oh, or for any other human activity. <laughs> I almost forgot that part. <laughs> it's only after any act, any human, I'm saying human in the sense of those things that go on prime, in the secondary world, the intellectual world, the world that springs from, the world that emanates and is irreversibly tied to, based upon, man having a talking end of the nervous system, the brain. There are no reasons in the intellectual sense for anything that man does. But those things that apparently are the reasons, that is the facts. Why did you do so and so? I'll tell you. There is no reason, and it's only after the acts, that any apparent fact <coughs> is trotted out and offered up for sale. Like a good livestock show. Bring on the next horse, bring on the next sow. But they only come out. No one even oh. thinks. God, I wish I hadn't said oh. that. No one even thinks of a reason for the acts that must be done until after the act. And you've got to remember, the time then becomes irrelevant. It may happen immediately. An act, a person may do something. One man may push another one, his nose in with his fist, and right beside him, immediately, a cop says, Why did you do that? It may happen just almost immediately. Or the man whose nose is now in an unusual configuration may go, Why did you do that? <laughs> or it could be months. It could be a long time later. It could even go undiscovered, unnoticed. But it will be only when someone inquires, when it falls in, when it gets past the nature of the act, it is sometime after that, and only, 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 only after that, that any fact, any explanation, but any fact connected to it, it's only then that the auctioneer says, bring out the next one. It is only after the fact, it is only after A has invaded B, only that A the leader of country A, or if it's one person, 
man A attacks man B. It is only after the act that man A, country A, only afterwards has any facts regarding the event. And I'm using, I assume all of you do know, explanations has nothing to do with what's known as ordinary justifications. I don't mean that. It's facts as opposed to acts. That one country, one man punches another one in the nose. That's the act. Grabs food out of another man's plate. That's an act. The fact only happens afterwards. The fact, well, I did it because I'm starving. I did it because my children were starving. I did it because he hit me two months ago before you saw it. I did it because he threatened to. can be immediate, be much later. But it is only afterwards. And you don't have to look at me making hand gestures and saying this. All you got to do is have some sort of walking around awareness but now of your own nervous system. And you should go, oh my God. I'll be royally reamed. That is true. <laughs> and your partner will say, well, let's don't think about that right now. <laughs> and of course, your partner means, let's don't ever think about that again. <laughs> it is back to this. There was no reason, reason, there was no fact for the invasion. I don't mean there was no justifiable fact. I don't mean there was no good fact. I don't mean that there was no defendable fact for country A attacking country B. It's got nothing to do with that. Do not listen at old levels. It's not that I'm saying, well, country A, in the example I had in mind, this country A did not have any reason, any justifiable reason to attack country B. That's not it. Nor is it, well, it may not appear to be a civilized, defendable act on country A's part, but I happen to know that country B had just been waiting for their chance to attack them or had been siphoning off some of their resources. It's got nothing to do with that. It is that there was no reason until after the fact. I mean, after the act. That the fact follows the act. There's no way out. It is one of the more, if not dependable, it's one of the more irritating laws in 6D, in 6D physics. That in my example, just that we start off with, Country A cannot come up with a good explanation, as to, that is, good facts as to why it attacked Country B, but for a very good reason, because there was no reason. And, of course, ordinary intelligence, listen to this, will say, well, that's not true. Just ask them. There's got to be some reason. And, of course, you would ask them. And Country A says, well, the facts are this. And you could go, well, I don't accept that. And Country A goes, well... All right, I got this other little filly. Bring her out and look at this one. Maybe you'll buy this one. I mean, you might or you might not. But don't get distracted. It doesn't matter whether the horse comes out and it looks good. And you think, well, I wanted a paint or I wanted a mare. Or when you bring out horses, I wanted a cow. Oh, that's irrelevant. You got to understand that the cows, the horses, the show, bringing them out cannot go on until the act has happened. After that comes the fact. Facts follow acts, and it doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about, whether at any particular time you or anyone else says, well, to take what you're speaking for them, they say, well, take what you're saying, okay, but in this case, the facts that follow the acts are not sequential. They're not rational. They're unacceptable. There was no reason. But see, ordinary intelligence would stop there. That's why ordinary intelligence is our, if I may speak for us, is our hero. <laughs> All right. Ponder it a little more. How about more specifically? How about the unseemly? in a subversive sense, unprofitable, but the kind of unseemly way that men pick on 
individually one another's reasons. <laughs> not justifications and not excuses. The reasons. But it's just the everyday reasons that other people have insofar as the way they live and the way they think. And there's a constant conflict. It doesn't have to be a physical invasion of one guy's space around his nose or your fist. You being country A do not have to absolutely physically attack country B because that would be an act. But in the world of facts, in the world of facts, people are continually engaged in some form of combat as far as the movement is right at the base of the movement of energy in the secondary world. But notice... Men pick on one another, they debate, they argue one another on the basis of the facts. That is, the explanations that the other person has about what they are, what they think. And notice, if we're back to the at the ordinary level, one man's feeling, man A is feeling toward man B. Man B has a different religion different race, different nationality, different ideas. <coughs> Don't let religion and nationality and race and all that confuse you. Surely you people won't because it's not as physical and easy as it may sound. They're ideas. The country A, man A looks at man B and he's, he has different, man B has different religious, political, economic theories, ideas. Country A, man A, dislikes him on that basis. And on that basis, no matter how intelligent the two parties are, on that basis, to the same degree that man A finds fault with, disagrees with man B's facts, his explanations as to why he thinks like he does, notice, in the truest sense of the term, man B's reasons, that is the facts he presents, are insupportable. They are indefensible. In the same way that country A Attacks country B, unprovoked, out of a clear blue sky, and you as an outside observer, country C says, ah, oh, and country A explanation, no, no, no. Then they give another one, no, 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 not that one either. Notice, between humans, between individuals, to the same degree that you are wired up to dislike, to disapprove of someone else's facts. Now forget their acts for a minute, their facts, their explanations for what they are, why they belong to a group, why do they support a certain idea, why they would like to see certain things happen. To the same degree that you disagree with it, to that same degree, it's insupportable. That is, they cannot offer up then a fact, a reason for why they're that way. Well, in case you missed it the first time around, the reason men, and that's all nations are, but the reason men cannot offer up an acceptable, any acceptable facts for their acts is very simple. They don't exist. I mean, what could be more reprehensible than that? you got to admit, it's tricky to tap dance in six dimensions and your ear can only pick up maybe two or three. It's like they're these huge holes. You think you knew the song, you thought you had the rhythm that's going, and it's like it keeps fading in and out. There are no facts, there are no explanations to support anybody's act, no matter who, until after the act. There is no fact until after the act. And there is no fact that will absolutely, unconditionally, explain to anybody, satisfactorily, the act. This didn't get that complicated. I was just trying to keep from distracting you by using real common terminology. But, see, no one can explain, no one can justify what they do completely. I know all the little things that if, you're, if you find your mama got drunk and put in jail, 
you might go, well, Jesus, give the old woman a break. Not because she's your mother. And somebody next door might think, well, that's pretty bad for a 70-year-old woman to get drunk and be arrested, especially if whipping up on a cop. <laughs> but I can understand him defending it. her. It's his mama. You understand? Country A attracts country B, and country C says, shame on you, country D. Part of their population is into the border of country, over the country A, and part of country D might say, hey, they had reasons. Maybe I can see why you're upset by it, but you, you don't have our same view. You understand, out in life, <coughs> there's always <coughs> a polarized world <coughs> since country A, or vanilla cannot completely overwhelm chocolate, country B. It has to keep back and forth. It has to be a matter of relative dominance, preeminence. One body, some person leads for a while, and then you dance backwards, then you lead a while. So it's not a matter that, well, I can understand this person attempting to justify their actions, or them attempting to justify the actions of their mother, or their neighbors, or their allies. It's not that the attempt to justify is good or bad, but just notice, nowhere in the world, Notwithstanding the fact that there is a kind of movable spectrum in there that somebody can say, well, I can understand why you try to justify it because that's your mother or those are your relatives. But notice, as far as it being absolute, no one has any facts that will absolutely justify, that is, satisfy other people as to why they committed the acts. Never. Of course, never is not true because sometimes it does. But when it does, the energy has been grounded out and you don't notice it's like something that happened that was of no consequence or something that you really can't remember. That, don't you remember when country A attacked country B? If it is actually worn out in you, you wouldn't remember. You wouldn't be one of the old two men sitting around that could still remember it. But notice they're vague. They still don't have any justification. They cannot accept. And even if they can't remember, well, I can't remember exactly what country A said was their reason 50 years ago, but I know this. It was BS. You don't remember exactly what it was? Well, no, I don't have to. But I, I can't tell you exactly, but... No. The facts in any situation, to the same degree that you are electrically drawn to it, that you are feeding off of it, you are feeding back to it, it could happen 50 years ago and somebody has to remind you of it. To the same degree that you're wired into that, to that same degree, then the people who committed the acts, the facts that followed, never, ever satisfy. Never. Put quite childishly. Anytime somebody does something you didn't like, your mama, your children, and you say, good God Almighty, why did you do that? <laughs> it's only ordinary people. After that's going to ever be surprised if I said, wait a minute, do you understand that whatever they tell you is not going to be completely satisfactory? Well, yeah, because they were wrong. <laughs> it's real hard to get your finger in a place where there is no finger place which is the problem with polarized thinking. There is nowhere to get in the middle. There is no explanation. That is, there are going to be no facts will ever follow any act that will absolutely justify, that is, satisfy, explain to interested parties, that are people who are electrically wired in to the situation, whether it be almost immediate or whether it be 50 years ago, and they're working off the repackaged electrical energy of memory. No explanation, no facts, will ever explain the acts, no matter what they were. But the reason is not psychological. It is not because to take uh, parents and children and say, well, any time you ask a child, why did you do that? And they go, a witch came in and made me do it. Oh, you, that's not true. I mean, you're a grown-up. You're not going to believe that. Not, you know, not you. You had some college. Uh, <laughs> my invisible friend spelled it. I didn't spell it. And you think, well, I'm not sure he has an invisible friend. <laughs> you are never satisfied with the facts that follow the acts. But it's not because of the facts. It's not because, well, the fact is unjustified. Or the fact is, the little nipper is lying. He doesn't have an invisible friend. He spelled that. Can't fool me. That's not it. The reason that the facts never satisfy and explain the acts is because there is no reason. 
<laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> if there is no reason, how can you say, well, I don't find that reason totally satisfying. Well, hush my mouth. I don't find that reason, <laughs> I don't find that reason to be logical. You cannot find it to be logical. You cannot find it to be low fat. You cannot find it to be in the temperate zone. It doesn't matter. The reason you don't find it to be this or that is because the fact is you don't find it. <laughs> there is no reason. Now I'm using reason, remember. The facts. Not some sort of childish illogical attempt at justification, forget all that. That's all polarized. There is no reason that is explanation, not justification, a real attempt to explain an act, not justify it, not try to excuse yourself. And I just used acts because we have to, to get your attention going, have to use acts that apparently are positively or negatively charged, like country A attack pro country B. Or somebody punched you in the nose. How else are you going to describe anything in the polarized world? So when I say explanation, facts, it's got nothing to do with a judgment of it. It's an explanation. The best attempt, if it was somebody attempting to be a scientist, an objective clinical observer, the facts never exist until after the act. Never. Never, ever. Thus do you see, and all you got to do is find it in you, thus do you see that anybody's explanation of what they did is never going to be satisfying. And those of you that are really honorable thugs can forget about out there, how about you trying to explain to you why you do or why you did anything you did? The only, all reasons that men have for doing what they did trail the need for having done what they did. And any time, no, just to yourself, well, somebody's going to ask me why I did that. If your own partner hasn't. Whatever you say is not satisfying. Which, of course, is good enough for the honorable profession of psychiatrist and priest. But there is no satisfying explanation. There is no satisfying facts to explain the acts because they come afterwards and they do not explain the acts. It's not possible that in that sense, the reason that no facts, no explanations are reasonable and satisfactory is quite simple. Because there are no reasons. I mean, what the hell do you want? You're going to criticize the rest of your life. That is, react in a way to help transfer energy that life needs. Whether you need or not is open to some. But the rest of your life, you're going to continue to criticize that which does not exist. Well, I told you we wasted too much time with the intro. We'll try to push on some other time. I'm not going to push that phony baloney button. Oh, all right. Well, it looks kind of dramatic, doesn't it? <laughs>